y'all doing and welcome. I am Willie Williams. Appreciate y'all for joining the player. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Please remember go around to the WillieWilliamsShow.com. Y'all check out a few things. Subscribe to the website. If you would like to support a player around here, you can get some for you and them little ugly ass babies by clicking the gear link on the website. If you'd like to see what we call the event video, please go around to the Patreon, the Willie Williams Show. The link is down there in the description. I need you like and share and tell somebody about a player. We try to get the thumbs up over 500 in every show so we can do something to the algorithm. Listen, we got a PayPal link down in the description. We got dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, top and bottom. Willie Williams Show, that is the cash app. And if you just so happen to happen to hit that super chat, please don't go over $5 because the player don't know if he getting it or not. They say I get 30, they say that they get 70. God damn it, I think they getting the whole honey. Remember, the midday news show, if you can't watch it with your eyes and you can't use your peripherals and see a player, big word, I ain't even got them screen. We do got a thing called a podcast on Anchor and Spotify, the Willie Williams Show. Please follow me on IG and Twitter at The WW Show. Appreciate y'all. Bow. What it do? What it do? How's everybody doing? Today is March the 18th, 2024. Hi, 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 hi. I am Willie William. Appreciate y'all for joining me. This is the Willie William Show. This is the Midday News Show in this wonderful month of all, um, uh, March. Hell, it's, all, it's Easter month. It's Easter month. It's almost Easter. We get to hide the eggs and find the eggs. Listen, y'all let me know something. Um, how many of you all as adults, how many of you all as adults do the Easter egg hunt? I'm not talking about doing the Easter egg hunt with your kids. I'm talking about grown folks trying to get eggs for themselves you trying to do the easter egg hunt for yourself to where like you like you'll run over the churn and stuff like that you'll knock them down and everything you know what i'm saying just so you can get you the egg though it's all about the egg it's all about the egg and that's why i am asking i want to see what type of parents we are out here and and what type of adults we are what is you willing to do for your Easter egg, no, you say eggs are too expensive out here in these streets. Now, 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 a lot of times we go to church. We had the Easter egg hunts at church and stuff like that right now. You know, so <laughs> I'm just asking. I am just asking because a lot of people, they go to church with the Easter egg hunt and they allow their children to run around and find eggs. I'm just trying to see if you try to find your own dog on eggs out here. That man, I see the lights at six, um, at 60. This is not good. This, this is not a good thing. It's 06. It's a Monday. It's a Monday. I do know that it's slow on Mondays. We're dragging just a little bit. Slow moving Monday. Ooh, there go that. Oh, God. There go that. Um, Yawn right there. Salute Detroit. What it do, what it do. Say, hey, Willie the Bronx is up in here for that fire. Say, hey, my beautiful chat family. What's happening? Say, the 614 is in the building. What it do? Say, Willie, no notifications. Say, y'all get them lights up early. We at 67. We at 67. That's what I see. Can y'all do a player solid? The D is in the building. The 313 is up in the building. What's happening? The 757 is up in this thing. North Carolina is in the building. Say the Bronx, New York is in the building. Say what pop past that leg at 30 minutes of five. Say the 505 checking all my peoples. Happy Monday. Oh, happy Monday to you. The 313 is in the building. Say hitting a like on two devices, bitch. That's what's up. Sugarland, Texas up in the house. Say hey. Um, damn, damn it. Say, say, hey, oh, damn it. I'm saying, say, will it say hush out here in these streets? Say the 612, um, the, the 816 is checking in. That's what's up. Mm, 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 mm. We coming in slow. We coming in slow. I'm seeing a 76 thumbs up. I'm seeing a, sub, a 76. And if you was new around here, if you was new, the one thing that we try to do, we try to get over a hundred. So we can get the show started. Um, we also streaming live on Twitch, twitch.com, um, well, twitch.tv dot com, the Willie Williams show. I need your support. I need your support around here. Remember, um, we also trying to get the numbers up. We're trying to get over a hundred on Twitch. We're trying to do over a hundred on Twitch. Let's see what we got right now. Let's see what we got. Damn it, I see 83. I see 83. Come on, y'all. You said YT tripping again. You already know it. Already know it. You say it's 109 watching. I see 120 um one right now. Oh, wait. Wait, you see the 214? Why? It's 214 people here, and we had 88 likes. We should have been over 100 by now. What is you good people doing? We got 94 followers. We got 94 followers on Twitch. We need to get over 100. 
We need to be over a hundred. I need your support. Do not let me down. <laughs> I see 90. Come on. Come on with the 92. Shout out to Sam for the $5 cash shop. You say Chinatown front and center. I appreciate that right there. Show enough, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hold on. I'm trying to hit that, that back. Shout out to James for the $3 cash shop. I appreciate that. Come on. Come on, y'all. It's 94. 94. 94. Do a play a solid on this wonderful Monday. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. Like, oh, that's another one. I'm a tad bit thirsty. Y'all finna go on and get into it? Mm hmm. Oh, that's some good cold water right there. I see 99. I see 99. Come on. Come on. It is 09 after the hour. It's, it's 09. Come on. It's 99. Y'all do a play of solid. Give yourselves a pat on the back. Y'all made it over 100 by 09. That's what I'm talking about. Appreciate the love and the support. And support is a verb, ain't it? I think that's how the saying go, right? You say yawning equals thirsty. I'm a little thirsty. I am a little thirsty. Um, dog, We got a lot of news, y'all. We got a lot of news. We got a lot of news. We're not going to be able to do everything on YT with a lot of news, but we is going over to Rumble, rumble.com, the Willie Williams Show. The link is down there in the description. We're going over to Rumble. Rumble starts at 1 o'clock. Rumble and kick.com starts at 1 o'clock around here in these streets. So now that you know that right now, now that we done got that fly stuff out the way, let's go ahead on and get into this good news out here in these streets. A whole bunch of things done happened. Um, God, I had it in order. I had an order, I had it ready. But we can go ahead on and do it like this right here. We can go to Texas. We going to Texas. Texas, I am so hurt. I am so hurt. I really don't know why Texas did what they had done did. Well, I do know. You know what? No. We're not going to Texas. Let's go to Florida. Let's go to Florida. I'm playing with you right now. I am jumping around. I'm playing with you right now. We got to go on to get this out of the way because I had this almost four days, and this is not good. All right, bam. In South Florida, Florida, my state, stand your ground, stay. What's the bitch go home, stay? Please don't run up. We in fifth our life, stay. They say we now got a don't say gay Settlement out here in these streets. A don't say gay settlement. Here we go. To a settlement reached over the so called don't say gay law. Civil rights groups took legal action over the controversial legislation. Local 10 News reporter Joseph Ojo is live outside the Broward School Board in Fort Lauderdale with new reaction to the mm -hmm. ruling. So both sides, they are calling this settlement a win. There were court challenges mainly because of the unclear wording when it did come to this law. But this new settlement, it certainly does outline what can and can't be taught in classrooms. Mm -hmm. Dub the don't say gay bill, you actually could always say gay. Why did it have to get to this? Why did that false narrative even start? Why did it even start? Remember, you could always say it gay, but they turned it into the don't say gay bill. You so you see how powerful it is to say something and repeat something and, and then people will believe something. Go ahead. Nearly two years ago, Governor Ron DeSantis signing the controversial Parental Rights and Education Bill into law. But what critics of the law feared the most was its vague language, which they believed impacted teachers and was victimizing LGBTQ students. So right after the bill went into effect, mm -hmm. civil rights groups filed a lawsuit. No teacher has ever or will ever go into their school setting, into a classroom setting, and say, let me teach you how to be gay. Reaction okay. coming in from top school officials in Broward County, calling the settlement a win. Be able to uh, professionally develop our teachers to give the right curriculum to make sure that we're in, in line with the statutes, and making sure the parents are aware that if uh, they're uncomfortable with it, they have the option to opt out. In the settlement, the state clarifying language in the law that prohibits classroom curriculum about sexual orientation and gender identity for younger students and age appropriate for older, the language does make clear now the law does not prohibit discussion, conversation, references or counseling for and about gay students, also references in literature, even school projects. As long as teachers have peace of mind, I think everything will run pretty smoothly. In a statement, Governor Ron DeSantis calling the settlement a major win, adding, quote, we are victorious and Florida classrooms will remain a safe place under the Parental Rights Education Act. And State Senator Chevron Jones calling it a landmark moment 
saying in part, classrooms and schools ought to be safe spaces that promote empathy, compassion, and belonging, not fear and uncertainty. So that kind of means just don't tell people um, the truth and don't correct people. Classrooms and schools ought to be safe spaces. When we talk about safe spaces, that is to where you can say what you say without being questioned, without being judged, as they say. Um, and I don't even understand why people think that this is a good place or a good way um, um, to raise up the youth. This is not good for the society when the things that you do cannot be questioned. The decisions that you make cannot be questioned. This is not a good thing, but this is what we do. It safe spaces and promotes empathy. Why is we promoting empathy? Why should anybody care about what anybody else do or in, or how anybody else feel? Why should people do it? I know people do. I'm just saying compassion and belonging, not fear and uncertainty. So I'm going to assume that the fear is being questioned. Are they telling us that when you is being questioned, when you're being checked for the things that you do, that um, um, that, that puts people in fear? I don't know. I'm just saying. Well, not fear and uncertainty. Mm -hmm. This is freedom of speech. I feel like you should be able to talk about whatever you want to, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I feel like that's good. See, I feel like you should be able to say whatever you want to have the freedom of speech. I know, I know, I know we cannot say whatever we want to a hundred percent. I do get that part right now, but, um, um, for about the 90, 95%, I do feel like we should be able to say what we want to, but I also, hold on, hold on. How do they don't want people to judge them, but at the same time, you want people to have the freedom of speech. Isn't if you don't, or if you get upset when people is judging and or questioning you, isn't if you get upset and you want to shut that there down, isn't that stopping somebody's somebody else's freedom of speech? I'm just trying to think it through. I'm trying. I'm trying to think it through. Look at that baby here. Hold on. Look at that baby. That baby got Kool Aid. Kool Aid red. You ever talk about whatever you want to, you know? So yeah, I feel like that's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's good too. And so a memo will be sent out by the state to the school district stating the guidelines, and then in return, that lawsuit will be dropped. We're here in Fort Lauderdale. I'm Joseph Ojo. Well, that's what's up. And even at the end of that video, we still don't know what's going on. <laughs> we still don't know what's going on. Okay. All right. You can say gay in school now. <laughs> don't nobody care, man. Don't... Listen, listen. A lot of. A lot of the things that was going on two years ago, one year ago, and even this year too, is a lot of BS. Is it is a lot of wasted time. That's what I'm gonna say. We waste time on things that should not be, should not really. Damn it, we waste time on BS. We just do. Shit. Really ain't that that dog on. Things is really not that important, but we make things important and then it gets overblown to where now now society feels like this thing is important, but it really wasn't that important. It's just people kept repeating something and it just blew up to get big. But it really didn't do nothing and it really don't fix nothing. Because all of this stuff, it came behind people wanting to teach. People wanted to taught this stuff to the to the to the kindergartens to the kindergartners to the third graders that that was like the biggest problem in my mind but moving right along i ain't gonna eat much oh yeah i ain't much gonna talk y'all head off the day it's slow rolling monday and y'all know how this thing go bam 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 so that was them i thought that this was a t well how many of these things do we got what's going on Oh, we stand in the school house. We stand in the school house. Bam! Hold on, hold on, hold on, baby. Don't do, don't do a player like that right there. I'm gonna put this here up on the screen for you real, real quick. We, we stand at the school house. We have a teacher. <laughs> we have a teacher who was arrested 
but we have a social studies teacher who was arrested. Now, at this school, at this school we're going to go to right now, it has two teachers with the same name. Two teachers with the same name. That is very, very rare. But here we go. Details that led to the arrest of a Harding University high school teacher earlier today. Thanks for joining us tonight at 11. I'm Siobhan Bryan. We first brought you this story as breaking news this afternoon. A 24-year-old social studies teacher named Jasmine Wooten is accused of having intimate contact with a 16-year-old student. But we want to be clear, there are two teachers named Jasmine Wooten who both teach at Harden University High School. One teaches English, the other teaches social studies. The social studies teacher is who is arrested today. Mm -hmm. WBTV has obtained the arrest affidavit that paints a clearer picture of exactly what happened here. Our Cam Gaskins joins us now live outside Harden University High School. Cam, how did police learn about this alleged inappropriate relationship? Shout out to Tyreek for the $10 cash app. Say for the collection place. Say thanks, Willie. You is welcome. I appreciate you. Yeah, Siobhan, so according to that affidavit, it was an athletic trainer here at Harding University High School that overheard two students talking, and one student said to the other that he was engaged in a relationship with Jasmine Wooten. So that athletic trainer then contacted the school resource officer, who then got in touch with police, and then they arrested Jasmine Wooten earlier this morning. Now, the news didn't get to the student body until just before uh, classes were released today, but when that news hit the student body, it was a major shock, according to everyone we spoke with. It's all new at 11. It is wild, I'm not gonna lie, hard in high school, you feel me? You feel me? Shake my head. That was the <laughs> He's shaking my head. I wonder what he trying to get. Reaction from one student outside Harding University High School Wednesday afternoon. Reacting to the news that 24-year-old social studies teacher Jasmine Wooten was arrested for taking indecent liberties with a 16-year-old student. 24. 24 with a 16-year-old. Now, if she, was, if she was in California, this would be legal. This would be legal in California because they got the 10 year, um, they, they have expanded their, um, consensual sex 10 year, um, from four years to 10 years. So 24, it wouldn't be bad in California. Another student we spoke with says the student body didn't get the news until right before school was released, but it didn't take long to spread. You notice I say the student body, <laughs> the student body, the, don't, don't worry about it group calls, people posting it on social media already. It's getting around fast. Quay Carter also tells us that he was a student in Wooten's class during the first semester of this year, and he was truly surprised to learn that she has been accused of this crime. And I was really surprised, man. It definitely caught me off guard. I, I ain't had nothing to say about it, really, at first. He says that she was an energetic and engaging teacher during class. We would do fun things around the class and stuff like, and then she'll be talking the whole class. She'll be interacting with stuff, interacting with us and everything. So, yeah, she was a cool little fun teacher. Yeah, yeah, she was a cool little fun little teacher. You say it's always illegal for a teacher and a student. Well, well, there would be different charges in California. It would not fall even under the statutory rape law. Um, great. Oh, my bad. The statutory grape law, it, it would not even fall under that. It would fall under ethics and moral clauses and stuff like that. And or you should not be dealing with somebody who you have authority over, you know, but it wouldn't be like a sexual assaulting type thing. His arrest affidavit says that she and this student kissed and shared explicit text messages. Okay, and that okay. The initial that's all they did. The incident happened on February 28th at the high school. Carter says tomorrow will be filled with lots of gossip when the students return to school, but Wednesday night there is just an overall feeling of shock. Everybody was just shocked. I guess everybody was just in a daze. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, now, according to the Mecklenburg County inmate database, Wooten was released just after noon today on a $50,000 unsecured bond. She is scheduled to appear in court tomorrow afternoon. As of now, she is suspended with pay by Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools. Reporting live at Harding University High School, I'm Cam Gaskins, WBTV on your side. You say that baby suspended with pay out here at New Street. That baby can go home and think about what she had done did. Follow here, Cam. Thank you. While still paying her bills, you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, maps love love the children. Yes, they do. Meanwhile, yes, they do. You say French kissing or kissing cousins. Listen, the more and more and more that um, we find teachers doing exactly what they want to do out here, the less the less that is gonna bother us. I promise y'all, 
the less that is going to bother us. And I can almost, let, let's see, I'm pretty sure before the end of the year, we're going to have like easily over 100, e easily over 100 teachers arrested for doing something they weren't supposed to be doing with a student. I can almost guarantee you that. Moving right along, I ain't gonna eat much hold you. Remember um, last week, last week, it wasn't too long ago, but it was last week. Mm -hmm. Last week we spoke about stores closing. We spoke about the stores closing. Um, the stores, um, what are they? The Dollar Tree and the Family Dollars and stuff. They they closing a thousand stores, right? Across the country. So now they done done the story and how this is going to affect the community and what or what effects that it will have on the community. They spoke to a few people. Um, and let's see what these people got to say about these stores not being in the community anymore in a short little while. Here we go. Putting food on the table is a hassle for so many right now. It's too high. All the stores are high. Everything that's expensive, it's ran, everything. Everything that's high. Every time with the year passed, that's more high. For decades, discount stores like Dollar Tree and Family Dollar have allowed people to stretch their dollars in low-income communities, be it for the prices or just the convenience. Do you feel like in your neighborhood you have enough? You can choose from enough? No. Mm -mm. No, you don't. But in the near future, nearly a thousand family dollar and dollar tree locations nationwide are set to close. Those locations haven't been disclosed yet, but it will mean people who shop there are left with the next best option. You say Granny showing that cleavage. Publix, that's more expensive, but that's more better. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I go to Publix for buy a bread or donuts or something, meat. That or making a tough decision. Yeah, Just that I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to get it. I wanted to get a clearer look at those price differences. Mm -hmm. So I visited four different stores to pick up the same exact four items. Four different stores, four items. Let's see the price difference because a lot of people, they just don't know what's going on out here in the street. Here we go. A snack pack of tuna, a 1.25 liter of Coke, some pasta, a box of Kraft mac and cheese, and brownie mix. Here's a price breakdown at each store. $6.75 at Dollar Tree, $6.79 at Walmart, $8.45 at Family Dollar, and $9.81 at Publix. So this gives us this gives us insight on the stores that we shop at. Hmm? Now, we kind of always know that Publix is going to be higher because Publix also care about um quality quality public is a quality um type restaurant it always has been public has a standard walmart has always been not so much on quality and then the dollar stores is the dollar store but family dollars actually higher than the dollar tree I also wanted to know why we tend to see so many dollar stores in communities that lack other options. Mm -hmm. So I took that question to Dr. Tom Felke, an associate professor at Florida Gulf Coast University School of Social Work. When dollar stores come into communities, they tend to target lower socioeconomic communities where uh, large grocery stores tend to underinvest their products. Despite news of those store closures, the U.S. will still have about 16,000 family dollars in Dollar Trees. That's in addition to the other dollar store giants like Dollar General. But that doesn't mean the closures won't hurt some communities. When those communities have this big influx and then all of a sudden that's taken away, they're left in a real problem because the underinvestment of the large grocers, the pushing out of the mom and pop grocers, and now the disappearance of those dollar store, that a lot of that, I think it makes up about 78% of uh, grocery in a lot of those communities. He adds that could lead to more food deserts and more reliance on fast food. But Dr. Felke does see this as an opportunity to address the issue with these stores being the go-to grocery store. What we really have to hope for is that uh, one of these larger grocers sees that area now as a strategic investment opportunity and actually comes in and puts a location there. Or mm, you, 
You say, I'm willing to pay more for better customer service, yeah? Another option. There is a uh, national program called uh, Fresh Access Bucks that would allow individuals who utilize SNAP benefits to double the amount of those benefits by using them at farmer's markets. Giving every family an opportunity to have a healthy meal at the best price options. So you mean to tell me that SNAP people can get double? Options. There is a uh, national program called uh, Fresh Access Bucks that would allow individuals who utilize SNAP benefits to double the amount of those benefits by using them at farmers markets. Giving every family an opportunity to have a healthy meal at the best price options. In Tampa, Jada Williams, ABC Action News. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. It is really going to hurt a whole bunch of community because a lot of time we also treat the dollar stores like the corner stores you know what I'm saying because it's close it's closest to your homes it's closer than going to the big stores which a lot of times it saves you a lot of time so it is really beneficiary for you to go to these stores and now once these stores move once these stores get on up out of there it's going to be a real, real big problem. And that's the doggone shame that these stores are closing down. But that's the price of doing business out here in these streets. Moving right along, I ain't going to eat much, hold you. Um, dog it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got it. Bam. Tyson Foods. Let's talk Tyson Foods. Let's talk about all of you good people who is okay with the migrants. All you good people say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they should be able to come. They should be able to cross the border. Because this is the great United States of America. It's racist if you let... It's racist. It's racist if you stop them from coming. This is what people be thinking. This is what people be saying. Or is it... Um, this is what people said prior to the influx. Well, now Tyson, Tyson Food, Tyson Food, the corporation, the company, is now um, hiring 40,000 plus migrants, which will take 40,000 jobs away from Americans. Here we go. Bloomberg Simone Foxman is reporting on how meatpacker Tyson Foods is capitalizing on this inflow. And Simone, this is uh, one of the stories that really got my attention this morning on the Bloomberg Terminal. We know that critics of the White House talk about New York City migrants as illegal, but your story actually points out that they have work authorization. Walk us through what that means. So these are asylum seekers or people uh, applying for a very similar temporary protected status. So they go, they apply for asylum and then they wait. But that application for asylum starts a ticking clock. And so most of them will have work authorization within six months. That said, they may wait for years mm -hmm. for their very first immigration court date and it's a good thing frankly for them to be able to work it doesn't mean that they're the company has 52,000 openings wow already employs 42,000 immigrants on um, social services provided by New York City or elsewhere. It means that they have papers, they can go get a job, be documented workers. And this, it turns out, is actually a pretty attractive uh, source of potential workers for places like Tyson. So why does Tyson have these, what seems to be immense hiring demands? So it has a turnover rate of 40%, meaning uh, mm. four in uh, 10 of its workers every year on its front, what it calls its frontline workers, the folks who are, you know, washing the chicken, uh, looking for bones, but packing it up into trays, uh, very few of them are going to stick around in the long term. So it needs to hire something like 52,000 people this year. It and so people get hired and then they go ahead on and they find them a better job and, or they get fired. But either which way, they leave the doggone job because maybe the job is harder than what they expected 
Well, maybe the job got hard. Pretty employs mm -hmm. about 42,000 uh, immigrants and refugees, but it sees this part of the workforce uh, as a particularly good one for immigrants. They like to stay. They've um, they've often come from very difficult situations, mm -hmm. and so the company is really investing in a lot of services for them, whether it's English language classes, certain child care services, to try and convince them, you know, come stay. You may make only $16.50 an hour to start, but this is a good job. And you say you may only make $16. $16 is a lot of money. <laughs> right? Am I right or am I wrong? You say, well, um, you may only make $16 as if that's a bad thing. Well, uh, well, I guess it depends on the state, but $16, it used to be good. Shout out to Damien for the for the, for the one dollar cash shop. You say, didn't they whip them Haitian migrants years back? Mm. This is a stand up, a, sta a stable job. I can't get my words out today. So you were at a Tyson Fair in New York City not so long ago, where Tyson was basically making this pitch. What did you observe when you went there? Yeah, so this is a fair put on by Tent Partnership for Refugees. This is a foundation. It's backed by the founder of Chobani. Uh, and what they did is they went out, they created a database uh, for these new asylum seekers in New York City specifically. Mm, you said that that's $32,000 a year, $16 an hour in, in Tennessee. It's popping. For real, though. They recorded though. all their documents. And so Tyson... You say $16 is not a lot of money. You can't make rent with that. Well, how, how much How much is $16 um, for the month? How much is $16 for the month? Somebody, somebody do the math for a player and reached out to them. They went through their database. They went through the list, said, you meet the work authorization criteria. Uh, you want to relocate. And we think uh, also that you'll meet our physical. So these people would come in. They'd learn a little bit about the company. And for the most part, Tyson had already gone through their various details of their application. And so many of them, uh, 17 the day I was there, and then uh, another 70 a couple weeks later, uh, went off to Tennessee to go start their uh, new jobs as uh, Tyson production uh, workers. So you say they always do some overtime oh yes 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 i am pretty sure that they're doing some overtime you say they split the rent that there you go you got to make your money work you say thirty two thousand two hundred and eighty dollars per year um and that's at 40 hours just so that's 25 60 a month that's 25 okay okay that's 25 60 a month before taxes okay they say two people making sixteen dollars per hour is is like sixty six thousand a year. So that is good for like a household, right? Sixty six thousand is great for a household. You say it's no overtime at Tyson. Wow. Wrap this all up for us. How do these hiring programs play into the larger debate on immigration that's taking place, you know, across uh, our our political society? You said it earlier. Illegal is a very charged term, yeah. right? Uh, companies like Tyson have extraordinary hiring needs, and right now there's a shortage. There's 9 million open jobs, this according to uh, some reporting that Enda Curran and Augusta Sarayva did last week. You know, these companies are going to look for workers uh, as, as well as they can. They, they are going to start yeah. looking at this potential workforce of people who are here indefinitely with legal authorization to kind of fill those jobs legally now and this is what people <clears throat> and this is what people were saying before the influx of that um the the left or the democrats have been trying to get the illegals in to replace you good people to replace you good americans you good americans who don't want to work because y'all feel like 16 dollars ain't enough money you say 16 dollars an hour will go far for a family because our migrant brothers and sisters are sticking together and putting all that money in one household. So if you think about it, it's like $32 an hour coming in. That's a fact. <clears throat> That's a fact. But we, us good people, we will not look at it like that. We will look at the individual. I'm only making, I am only making $16 an hour. I'm only making $16 an hour. But y'all stay in the same house though. You know what I'm saying? Like, we will not look at, but it's thirty two dollars an hour. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Damien for the for the for the one dollar cash out. He's, he said they had no issues 
turning the Haitians away. Oh, that's a fact. And they always been turning the Haitians away. Always. Now, what does this say about the system? Does it create perverse incentives? These are the kinds of questions that we start need to asking ourselves. But, you know, if Congress is uh, not able to move forward on this, this is the way things are going. And it looks like programs like this one are likely to become important to how these jobs get staffed. Yeah, especially given that Tyson needs to hire more people than it has working for it right now, which is a pretty incredible number. It, they have 100,000 uh, U.S. workers in this wage class, but yeah. if they're going through so many, then you have to. Yeah, yeah. He's, you say, I live in Tennessee and we have a Tyson here, and my neighborhood apartment is full of immigrants. There it is. Because again, they do know how to work together. They do know how to stick together, work together, because this is in a time to where they are all that they have. Remember back when black folks was together, we used to work together more than they are doing now because there was a time to um, when we was all that we had and or we felt like we was all that we had, so we worked together more. That's back when black folks were together. That's what's up. Shout out to Buck Good for the $5 cash shout. He said, didn't Tyson just lay off employees? Um, I don't, I don't know if I did a report this year about Tyson. I don't know, but it's been multiple, multiple, well, other multiple, uh, multiple other businesses out here who actually, who actually have been laying people off. It's a doggone shame. Just business, I guess. It's just business moving right along. I ain't gonna eat much hold you. Um, damn it. Now, where's my doggone thing? So I got the, oh, well, of course I can't find it if it's like that. Gotta go around here. Y'all, y'all let go to Texas. Let's go to Texas. I heard some real concerning news out of Texas. I saw some, um, it was con concerning, concerning news. <laughs> Pornhub suspends its sites in Texas. This is horrible. Here we go. Texans are now blocked from the adult website Pornhub. The site cut off access over its objection to a state law that requires age verification measures to protect minors from being exposed to obscene materials. Hmm. Wait a minute. You say yes, the plant that you're talking about just laid off workers. Oh, really? Now, it's the latest dispute between adult content websites and Texas lawmakers. William Malhado from the Texas Tribune is joining us this afternoon to give us some insight. So first, take us back to the Fifth Circuit's most recent decision last week that really got us to where we're at today, William. You said they better use a VPN, okay? Yeah, thanks. Okay. So the Fifth Circuit ruled that part of the 2023 law can stay in effect. That's the age verification mechanism that, that Pornhub took issue with. The Fifth Circuit also said that part of the law uh, is unconstitutional and that it compels speech. And that part of the law required adult content websites to include, to include health warnings about pornographic material. Uh, and so that, that part of the law is no longer allowed to be enforced, but Pornhub decided to cut off Texans la yesterday because of that age requirement measure. Mm. Okay, so that happened yesterday. Oh. And now moving forward, does the site plan to appeal? I know they were part of a lawsuit last summer. Yeah, so, so Pornhub uh, is, is one of the plaintiffs uh, uh, in a lawsuit against the state. And after the Fifth Circuit's ruling last week, uh, Pornhub did say that they plan to appeal this decision mm. uh, as part of a kind of concern about First Amendment protections. Okay, so you spoke with a professor who specializes in internet law. Why does he say the state's age verification requirement is, quote, categorically unconstitutional? Mm. Yeah, so, so he says that adding a step in which all users, both minors and adults, have to verify their age, a mechanical step, causes, creates some sort of barrier, and, and that barrier impedes uh, adult to adult communication, and, and that is really what uh, he says is unconstitutional. And this you say no more stepmama videos for Texas. Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme Court, has previously ruled 
on similar cases related, regarding online obscene material and said that barriers to adult to adult communication should be avoided as a matter of protecting free speech. Yet the, the Fifth Circuit's ruling last week uh, stood in contrast to those uh, Supreme Court rulings. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how are lawmakers responding? I know State Senator Angela Paxton is speaking out on Twitter as well. How are they responding to Pornhub's Hub's latest actions? You say, wait a minute, Texas can't upload them babies on the Hub? Say, I am appalled. Jeez. Yeah, I think lawmakers are... We acting like we really do care about the kids, though, and that's really the sad part. ...are happy that part of their law is still in effect. Uh, and and uh, when we reached out to uh, the Attorney General's office for comment for this story, uh, they effectively said, good riddance. Okay, William Mahato from Texas Tribune, thank you so much for being with us this afternoon. Yeah, 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 right. Um, you say that they will get around it. They say they really act like these kids is idiots. And I keep trying to tell people, oh, these kids are smarter than the damn adults. If if we want to see something on the internet, we're going to see something on the internet. Period, point blank. They say, Willie, they can't watch Pornhub, but can sell monkey in Northwest Dallas and I'm sure other cities. That's a fact. We just did the story about sex workers. Sex workers in Dallas. That's also Texas. Dallas, Texas. They was not arresting or did not arrest none of the females selling monkey. But now we got to block Pornhub from Texas because of age verification. Notice it's just Pornhub. So that's to say a lot about it because you can watch every other porn site in Texas. How do you know that, Willie? Because they only going after Pornhub. They're not going after all, all porn sites. That's not what they're doing. It's a doggone shame. Or, hell, listen, listen. For Pornhub, all you need to do is do like, I think that's X Hamster, if I'm not mistaken. They have one that says, um, as soon as you pull it up, are you 18 years or older? Man, just do that there and, and, <laughs> and get your site back up out in Texas, man. Because people, they still, they still gonna watch Pornhub. Your children is still gonna watch Pornhub. They like sex just like you like sex. Just is what it is, man. We cannot control, um, we cannot control, let's say, something that's natural. You really can't. We can try to shelter kids as much as possible. But once we got this doggone internet, once we got social media, the only way to protect your kids from what's really, really out here, they cannot have the internet. You got to turn the internet off. And, and they have to be homeschooled. They cannot be around other children. Shout out to Phyllis for the $1 cash app. You say, hey, hey, chat, say, still, still praying for Miss Shirley. Say, love you, Willie, love you back. I appreciate that right there. Show love, do, show love, do. Mm-hmm. Say we were born naked. That's a fact until somebody told us that we need to put on clothes. I don't know why somebody would tell us that right now. Why, 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 why? All right, y'all, we got to go. Um, I, mean, I forgot what state this is, but we have a situation. We have a situation with a family. Um, Sad, sad story. We got another sad story. Hold on. The CPMD. The CMPD. What is that? Is that Cincinnati? Is CMPD, is that Cincinnati? Mm. Yes, I think this is Cincinnati. All right, bam. We got a sad store. Go ahead on and grab it. We have um, a mother. A mother and two children was found dead. Um, hey, a missing mother. And two children, they say, was found dead. Wow. I miss my baby. I miss my grandkids. She didn't deserve it. She wasn't, she wasn't an evil person, a nasty person. She was real sweet. A Charlotte family trying to process an unthinkable update tonight. Their loved one and her two children reported missing earlier this month 
are not coming home. Thank you for joining us for the News at 11. I'm Vanessa Rufus. CMPD says this missing persons case is now a homicide investigation. This is after human remains found yesterday in a Charlotte apartment complex turned out to be those of a missing mother and her children. Detectives say 22 year old Markayla Johnson, four year old Miracle Johnson and seven month old Messiah Johnson you say no tears were reported missing on March 3rd. So it is. Oh, oh, Charlotte. So is Charlotte or Cincinnati? I don't know. WCNC Charlotte's Anna King shares what we know about their possible killer. Charlotte. Oh, okay. Charlotte. So there's Charlotte, North Carolina, Charlotte. This is an incredibly sad outcome, one no one hoped for, especially the Johnson family. You can hear the pain in their voices when they spoke to us earlier today. Now, CMPD says they are launching a nationwide search for the man who caused this pain on the family. They say, are they still missing if they found off Earth? That's a good question. That's a good one. These signs hung up around the Queen City as a Charlotte family held out hope. Well, Y'all just keep praying for us. Have mercy on each and every one of us. And God bless you. And may this be over soon. After weeks of hoping, the family got the news no one wants to hear. She was a good person. And everybody knows. Kaylin would do anything for you. She didn't deserve this. She did not deserve this. 22 year old Mark Kayla Johnson and her two babies, four year old Miracle Johnson and seven month old Messiah Johnson were reported missing March 3rd. CMPD received a search warrant to search her apartment in Charlotte March 15th, their last known location. That search warrant unfortunately revealed the bodies of all three, uh, Markayla, Miracle, and Messiah. Homicide units and crime scene officials arrived to get evidence and are working to learn more about what happened. We are going to do everything that we can to make sure that we bring closure for the family and also bring justice to the person responsible for these murders. CMPD says this was not a random act, saying the suspect is someone Markayla was in a relationship with. Now, the only hope the family has left is the hope for justice for Mark. You say mama ex boyfriend, like y'all was saying, the ex boyfriend, domestic love situations. Domestic love situations will never ever go away. We got to be careful. We do got to be careful. Moving right along, I ain't gonna even much hold you. Bam. Doggone shame. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, um, shout out to everybody who's on twitch.tv.com, the Willow Williams Show. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Um, you say that you feel a like GoFundMe. Maybe in a in an updated report, they may have a GoFundMe going on. Um, damn it. Listen, we gonna cut the show short. We gonna cut the show short. There, there, there won't be a rumble. There won't be a rumble. I'm going to give y'all this last one, and then I got to go. I am so sorry. It's shit, shit just happens. Well, things, things just happen to where we got to make changes. We just got to make changes. I'm going to run y'all into Velda City. Velda City. I do apologize. This is a slow-moving Monday, but I cannot continue. Um, in Velda City no longer has a police force. The police done resigned. Here you go. Technically, which left us with no police services. Got to be more careful. Tonight at 10, police officers turned in their badges and walked off the job for good. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kelly Jackson. And I'm Brent Solomon. And Allred has the night off. New tonight, Robert Townsend explains why they suddenly resigned and who will now patrol the streets. Five on your side learned Friday, Velda City's only three police officers dropped a bombshell on their boss, Chief Danny Paulino. The officers suddenly resigned. I can tell you this, wasn't expected. The Velda City Police Department made the surprising announcement in a lengthy Facebook post. The post revealed the department only had three officers patrolling the streets for the past several months. Wow. The department cites 
financial hardships. They're faced with a financial decision about whether or not they're collecting enough tax revenues to support a full-time police department. And that money. And there's more. The police department's Facebook post also states the officers resigned due to, quote, internal issues with Velda City's mayor and board of aldermen. I tried to find out more about that. I wonder what hue them people is. You say, yes, they did call him Robert Townsend. That is his name. That sounds like the producer. Internal issues that would affect the operations or the administration, I'm unaware of that. More than 1,100 people live in Velda City. Mayor Gwendolyn Buds wouldn't talk on camera, but did confirm officers with the Pagedale Police Department will now handle calls. Oh, I said, I wonder if they dock it. I wonder what their hues was. This is Mayor Biggs. Like I've said previously or prior, it's something about these darker hue sisters who is in office. I don't know. I don't know if like the world is coming up against y'all or some, or if the devil is working or some, or they trying to tear down beautiful um, darker hue sisters out here. But y'all, it's, I don't know how y'all failing the way that y'all is failing. And it's like you all, it's failing all at the same time. I'm not understanding. Mayor Gwendolyn Buds wouldn't talk on camera, but did confirm officers with the Pagedale Police Department will now handle calls in Velda City. The city of Velda City is a um, close area with, with us um, in a partnership. Um, um, all the emergency services will c continue to go on. It's a big issue. Herb Jones has lived in Belda City for more than 30 years. Whoever comes by here uh, and patrolling the neighborhood is fine. Meantime, Belda City residents concerned about their safety. Officials say not to worry. If they pick up the phone and call 911, a police officer will be there. Robert Townsend, five on your side. Mm -hmm. And the Pagedale Police Chief tells us St. Louis County Police will now patrol Floridale Hills. Next week, Velda City's mayor and board of aldermen will hold an emergency meeting to discuss the next steps. Mm -hmm. Mm, that's what's up. Shout out to Damien for the for the for the one dollar cash app. We say crime rate is about to skyrocket. Yes, a dog on shame. <laughs> to all my doggy sisters. To all my doggy sisters who is still in politics. Or the doggy sisters who is about to apply for politics and be a part of the politics. Make sure that y'all look at the people who who came before y'all. Make sure that you look at these beautiful sisters who came before y'all. Y'all need to study these sisters who came before you. And do not do what these sisters who came before you did and or doing now. I really don't know what it is. But all across this country, darker hue folks in politics, especially females, are losing. You say, oh, Velda City is 95.4% darker here. Oh, wow. The, and it's only 1,100 people. And that'd be 95%. Wow. 95% darker here. Boy, this is saying a lot about how um, a lot of people have had the thoughts of black folks can't run their household, so they cannot run a city. They cannot run a city and and... They cannot run a county, they cannot run a state, and they cannot run a country. It's sad that these things have been said, but I have no idea how all of these folks is falling at the same time, or at least is being in the news all at the same time. I am seeing more darker hue politicians be in the news and darker hue women be in the news than any other hue of human be in the news. I don't know what that stuff is about, but it just is what it is. Y'all give yourself the pat on the back. We done made it to the end of the midday news. I am so sorry that I got to cut this show short. I got to make a run. I got to go immediately. Um, I really do appreciate y'all for rocking. Um, players, prostate cancer awareness around here at the Willie Williams Show. Say it's just a finger so your prostate don't work, your meat don't work. Mess around and lose your little la la and or your life is your choice. You make the call. Your body Yo, booty, I am here to help. Yes, I am. Yes, I is. Hopefully, we will be back at 8 o'clock tonight. Y'all have a good one. I appreciate y'all for rocking. I'm out of here, man.